Let's discuss bulk coaxial cabling for residential wiring installs. Now, to be clear, the purpose of this video isn't to teach you how to terminate coax or uh, how to design where the drops are going to go in every room. Specifically, the purpose of this video is to discuss the characteristics of the cabling itself uh, that you're going to buy, you know, the, sh the shielding of it, the uh, material components that went into building uh, the wiring, all, all that sort of stuff. Uh, not any of the how to use it, just simply uh, discussing, you know, this is the proper sort of cabling to buy in the first place. This is basically a shopping guide. Okay, everybody clear? Okay, let's go. Behold my mock-up of a standard coaxial cable. There's many, many types and makeups and different compositions for all sorts of coaxial cables, as you'll quickly come to learn. But they all basically work this way. Uh, you've got an inner conductor that's just like a copper wire, like you might be used to, and you know any, any other thing if you've ever seen copper wire. It's just uh, typically it's a, a solid core. If you uh, you know look at the if you unscrew your cable box or uh, from a cable modem. And look, you'll see this inner conductor actually coming out through the jack, the uh, the connector. Like uh, when you put one of those connectors on, you strip everything back but this inner con conductor, and you uh, snip that down to an appropriate uh, you know, size to uh, go into the uh, piece of equipment you're plugging it into. Um, and then the rest of that there is to uh, you know keep back the rest of these layers and uh, provide a secure connection point um, for this inner conductor. And then you get this dielectric core, which is basically an insulator, and uh, it's there both. Uh, it's got a little bit of RF insulation value, not much. Its main purpose is to uh, be a layer of a non-conductive layer, and then to actually space the uh, metallic shield off from from the inner core a little bit because that's better in an RF capacity. And then you've got the uh, jacket of the cable, uh, which you know goes on the outside to keep the cable safe. And then, uh, depending on the application, they might you know put an armor layer on top of that. But uh, that's not typical in a home by any stretch of the imagination. Um, this is basically the makeup of most cabling. Um, they may add more shielding, uh, a foil layer, that sort of thing. Um, we'll, we'll get into that, but uh, this is basically uh, the 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 setup for all coaxial cables. They, they all more or less work like this. Historically, coax has actually been around for a longer time than you'd think. It's not a marvel of our modern age or the 20th century even. Uh, they were putting coaxial cable bundles uh, across the Atlantic Ocean in the mid-19th century for uh, telegraph lines. But that's just trivia. Where it actually gets relevant to us today is U.S. military technical specification books. Uh, during World War II, they were known as the radio guide. Uh, hence all the lettering for the types of coax we'll be talking about are typically RG and then a number. The radio guide bled over into industry and eventually residential use simply because all the people that the military trained during World War II then went back home and got jobs in industry. A lot of them used the training that the military gave them and they casually referred to uh, you know different setups by you know what they were trained for in the military. So all of these specifications then became uh, de facto specifications in industry and eventually for residential use. The counterintuitive part to our modern consumer mind is that uh, you're trained that bigger numbers are better or newer or whatever. If you've got, you know, the Juice Master 5000, it's presumably better than the Juice Master 4000 or 3000. Uh, that is not the case with these cables. A, a higher number does not indicate a, a higher specification or anything. It doesn't even work like Ethernet where that's sort of logical. The radio guide literally uh, it goes by page number. So RG6 is actually on page 6 in the guide. RG59, which was an older specification that works worse for modern applications, is on page 59. So RG59 is not magically 53 better than RG6. Ah, it's X-ray eye. See through anything. Wait a minute. This is Z-ray. C is just as good. In fact, it's better. It's two more than X. Hmm. I can see where that would be an advantage. Do you take cash? So please, everybody, no magical thinking about the cables. These numbers are 
essentially totally arbitrary at this point. They are a legacy thing. They could very well have been labeled RG Lion and RG Giraffe for all of the meaning that we can ascribe to these numbers at this point. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at the cables that you're likely to encounter in a home. All right, so first up, let's talk about the legacy cabling that uh, you would never put in new construction at all. Uh, you would just run into in uh, buildings that already exist. If you've got an old enough building, you might run into uh, like RF coax, which is kind of the generic term for a bunch of different standard type coaxes that were put into buildings for uh, like aerial antennas mounted on the roof to get broadcast TV or broadcast radio. In Europe and, I believe, parts of Asia, that it was actually standardized into uh, its own little uh, setup that you know came as its own faceplate, uh, and they would install that into the living room of uh, people's homes, and it would have a you know a plug-in for the TV and a plug-in for the radio, and all in one nice, neat little package. Uh, when I moved into my condo that was built in. Uh, 1979, uh, the old lady I had bought it from still had a, uh, a coaxial antenna to some antenna that at some point, I think they took it off the roof of where she'd left. But when I got there and started gutting things off the walls, uh, we had a, uh, a coaxial, uh, antenna for the, the TV, uh, connection on the apartment building there. So, uh, I mean, it's not uncommon. You will run into those, but you're not, you'll never put them into uh, any new construction. The other two legacy coaxes are uh, RG58 and RG59. Uh, these would have been the common coax put into uh, walls and buildings probably from uh, the early 80s on when it became apparent that cable TV was going to be a thing and builders started like uh, pre-wiring homes for cable TV in, in multiple rooms. The cabling that would have gone into the wall had they done a good job at the time would have been RG59. That would have been the properly specced cable to put into the wall. That, uh, In fact, even to this day, if you're running some sort of analog camera system, uh, RG59 is arguably better than uh, RG6. But nobody's actually doing that in their house walls. All right, and first on our cables that are like actually still uh, used today, we got RG11. Um, RG11 is uh, like RG6, which we're just about to go into. Um, it's it's just like the uh, the thicker, more serious version of RG6 um, that you use when RG6 went through the job because you gotta go too far. Um, in a residential use case, uh, we may be talking like. Uh, if you want to put a cable box into an exterior garage, like a, a standalone garage, um, you know, you know, dozens of feet from the house, um, it may may be worth it to go with RG11 in that case. Um, if you got to go further, um, certainly it, it makes sense. Um, other than that, it, there's not a whole lot of value. Um, if you think that, like, you know, the 50-foot run from your basement uh, that you'd normally do with RG6, you're like, oh, I'll put RG11 in instead uh, and, you know, reap the benefits. There won't be a whole lot of benefits to, to be gained. If, if you can do it, uh, if you can do a digital signal with RG6, uh, then it's not going to be any better if you do that same digital signal with RG11. It, you, you, you can't get a, a nicer zero or a higher quality one. Now, LMR400 is uh, the only 50 ohm cabling we've got on our list here. Um, there's the impedance difference between coax cabling. Um, there, there's a, a couple of them, but by and large, there's two main classes of it. There's 50 ohm cabling and 75 ohm cabling. And without getting into the technical details of it too deeply, the 50 ohm cabling uh, is meant for use with antennas. Uh, the, the, the rule of thumb is if the device you're plugging in using this cabling doesn't have its own power source, then it's probably going to want 50 ohm cabling. 
So if you've got like a passive antenna on the roof going down to a signal booster, then that wants 50 ohm cabling. The 75 ohm cabling is better for like data throughput and, and such, so long as you've got power on both sides. So if the device on both sides of the cabling has its own independent power source, then odds are it wants uh, 75 ohm cabling. Uh, all of the cabling we've talked about thus far is 75 ohm cabling. Uh, when you put uh, RG6 in walls these days, it's all 75 ohm cabling. Uh, the only 50 ohm cabling you would have is from antennas on the roof, uh, you know, from a, well, not even a satellite really. Uh, basically 4G antennas, uh, signal boost antennas for uh, cell phone performance, uh, anything like that. There are a couple uses, and the nice version of the cabling on a house scale is LMR 400. That's the sort of stuff that you can, you know, buy and uh, be safe in the knowledge that it's going to work and work well for you. All right, and now we come to our bread and butter cable, the RG6. Uh, this is the one that you, if you're running coax in a house, the, the default assumption is you run an RG6. This is what you use for uh, digital cable boxes. This is what you use for uh, cable modems. This is basically what you want for a digital signal over coax, and it's highly unlikely we'll be going from digital back to analog. So. Uh, RG6 is the correct answer for coaxial cable for the foreseeable future. Um, there's a couple designations that you should be aware of. They'll sell it as RG6, RG6 slash U, the U stands for universal. And then like the one I've got here, RG6Q, you'll see the Q designation pop up uh, a lot now. Uh, the Q is uh, designates that it's got uh, quad shielding on it. Um, a, a normal uh, RG6 cable has uh, your, your standard shield on it, and then this has a, a, a foil and an extra layer of the, uh, the mesh shielding on it as well for a total of four layers of shielding, hence the quad shielding. Um, and that's the, the new premium standard for this coax. If you want to buy the nice stuff, you're looking for uh, quad shielded coax. Now, the qualities you're looking for in a good RG6Q cable or quad shielding, A, you want the quad shielding, B, uh, you want it to be 75 ohm impedance, um, that's the sort of cabling that works best for powered equipment on both sides, so uh, when we're talking about running stuff in a wall, uh, then you want the 75 ohm, ohm impedance. Um, the uh, proper uh, gauge of the center conductor for RG6 should be 18 American wire gauge. So we got this 18 AWG here. Uh, and then good quality cabling will have a uh, solid copper conductor. However, you'll notice here, even though Monoprice is a pretty good brand and I, I like a lot of their equipment and, and stuff for a lot of things, this uh, specific version of RG6Q they've got here is not solid copper. It's copper covered aluminum or copper clad aluminum. You might see it uh, spelled out like this, copper covered, copper clad, or they might just say CCA um, for instead of copper. And uh, that is, I mean, you save money on the, the cabling, no doubt. Uh, we, we've got here this mono price and it's just under a hundred bucks for a thousand feet. Um, over here, I've got, you know, the actual high quality good stuff. Uh, you know, you've got our 75 ohm here, 18 American wire gauge, all that good stuff. But in here, it should say, there we go, 18 AWG solid copper center. So this stuff is the good stuff. It, you're not, um, you know, cheaping out on the cabling uh, there by by getting a cheaper metal. Um, as you, it's 50% more expensive because, you know, copper is more expensive than aluminum. But um, if you don't want to mess with it, I mean, that's the, this is the way to go. The, the, the copper will guarantee you a good connection all the time where the CCA is like uh, a hope and a prayer sort of a thing. So if you're looking for good cabling, um, this is probably the bit they're going to trick you on the most. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting solid copper. That's That's the real big deal here. And obviously, because it bears repeating, um, any of these types of cabling, you can find um, lightning arresters available um, in that format. Um, they make them female-female, and they make them female-male. I recommend the female-male versions of these guys, simply because then you don't need to like buy extra hardware besides them. You just you know screw the 
the cabling into the female end and then it becomes the new end of your cable and you just plug it in otherwise. Um, the other nice thing about these lightning arresters is they've got a place to hard attach for a drain wire uh, to ground. Um, so a, a nice design. Um, I like those. You want you don't need those obviously uh, on the coax system throughout the house, but you do need them on anything that's like coming from the exterior, like the line coming in from your cable provider. You'd want to put one of these in the minimum point of entry, uh, where the cable comes into the house as soon as possible. You want to get one of these on, on it to keep uh, everything in the house safe. And then also when you're running uh, like LMR 400 from the, uh, the, the roof line for uh, roof mounted antennas, uh, because they're on the roof and there's that, you know, potential for a lightning strike. You, you also want to uh, put these on that to protect equipment uh, downstream of it. Um, you can also put these on, you know, like close up on the antenna as well, like screw this into the back of the antenna and then onto the, uh, the cabling. And, um, that's all, all like, uh, ideally you're supposed to have one at the top and one at the bottom as close to the equipment you're protecting as possible. Um, but, uh, I, at least one, uh, by, by whatever equipment you've got your antenna hooked up into is a great idea for any sort of, uh, coax setup. So, uh, anytime you've got cables outside, you, you want to, uh, make sure you're protected and grounded with that. Uh, otherwise, like it's not necessary when you've, you're just running like distribution hub, you know, out from wherever you're running coax in the house to the drops on the wall where you're gonna plug in cable boxes and TVs. So to recap, the RG numbers are arbitrarily named after pages in a book that no longer exists. The three types of coax we care about are RG6, our workhorse standard with the quad shielding and solid copper core. RG11, the long-distance big brother of RG6, and LMR400, specialty cabling for roof mount antenna equipment. Finally, you'll want to protect any exterior runs with a lightning arrestor, because coax is conductive and lightning is scary. So that's everything you need to know to be a coax cabling shopping pro when it comes to residential wiring. In this series, I'm trying not to specifically mention any given type of product aside from uh, to show an example of a certain class of products specifically because uh, this stuff tends to change all the time and well a type of product I may mention will certainly exist and you'll be able to find it uh, a specific product might be discontinued or something better exists so uh, for all of these videos I'm creating a specific uh, link list here of all of the different types of products here um, and we'll try and keep these lists current with uh, my recommendations for products here so as you can see I've got the uh, the good quality uh, coax uh, thing here but uh, with the information provided in these videos the idea is you should be able to go out and shop for yourself and uh, you know, know what you're looking for and know you're not getting a bad quality cable. So there you have it. You'll find the uh, kit link below. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, questions below. I'd love to um, get to anything I see. Uh, I hope you learned something. See you next time.